what's going on people um hope y'all are all enjoying your quarantine uh yeah so that's happening um i had a viewer i don't know if they are a subscriber because of the way that the backside of youtube is set up i really can't go back and see if this person is a subscriber regardless um the username is vr space s not like the word space there but it's vrs um they ask said can you please post a 12 volt converted wiring diagram i have a 640 and i'm doing the new wiring but don't have much confidence also if you can explain coil with built-in internal resistor versus external resistor so what we're going to do let's go through this one instead of a diagram i may throw i may draw a diagram and put it in there anyway but we'll show the individual components on this tractor this is my old 640 here named him Ernest. it's a good name anyway um so let's get into it this way don't whenever you're dealing with one of these tractors if if you're in the same shape right there you want to convert to 12 volt but you're not confident or maybe you got some old junky wiring that's bird nested because that's you know that's common stuff gets patched and fixed over the years but never really fixed correctly um what you're looking for is to look at your electrical system that as far as what's going to drive this tractor what's going to make this old tractor run look at it as three separate circuits okay you're gonna have a charging circuit a starting circuit and an ignition circuit the charging circuit if you're going to do a 12 volt conversion i highly recommend using what they call a gm one wire alternator it's not really a one wire i'll show you what i'm talking about in just a second but if you use that it greatly simplifies what you got happening over here um so that's super super simple and it literally is one wire that goes back to where it's going to charge but there's two wires involved and i'll show you what i mean at minimum two wires involved um the next being the starting circuit again very very simple um on these old fords like this they got a start button we're going to show you in just a second if you don't if you bypass that you're bypassing the only safety on this track if you utilize that, if you if your if yours isn't working, I recommend going and buying one. Um, that start button prevents you from starting this tractor in gear. Like if you're standing beside it right here, I'm not scared to walk right up here beside it. You can hear me shake that shifter, making sure it's out of gear. Reach over, turn it on. Maybe the battery still got a good connection. It's not in gear, but. Put this tractor in gear you physically cannot match that button so again it's your only safety on this thing use it so charging system starting system and then the ignition i like the electronic ignitions um they're just they're simple they last um yes i can adjust points i know how to adjust points the first truck i ever owned was a 65 ford it had points i learned from my dad how to adjust them very well but why use that old technology unless you're just wanting like if you're restoring i absolutely understand but if you're just using it and you want it to be dependable reliable with the with how cheap points are made now uh, how cheap replacement parts are made um, that there really there isn't a better way than to go ahead and go with electronic ignition and for that reason I'm not even going to include I thought about doing it um, and if you are the if there's enough interest in it I'll show how to set up points but quite frankly this is a much better way with an electronic ignition and that's what I have on mine and that's what I'm going to show and if you guys want to see the other Hit me down in the messages in the uh, comments down below, and I'll do one on points too. And it'll kind of walk hand in hand with this one. But enough yammering, bumping gums. Let me show you these three different circuits, and then you'll be able to wire your own if you want to.
All right, so there's your GM one wire alternator. If you notice, it's not one wire because we have, we're utilizing this one right here. And what this does, it goes right here to this stud. This stud is where your output is. This excites the alternator at lower RPMs. This tractor doesn't turn very high RPM. This helps the alternator to start charging. I highly recommend doing this. You can get away without this, but if you crank your tractor and it's not charging, you have to race your tractor up, bring your RPMs up, and then this thing will excite and start charging. Red wire right there leaves the alternator and essentially it is going right there to I know this is crappy what I got happening here I apologize but that red wire from the alternator is coming here the reason it's going there this is your battery cable right here going to the positive so that is going to allow it to charge the battery all right so from your big post on the alternator to the positive side of your battery which we're doing through that terminal there that's it that's your charging circuit boom all right starting circuit this is your solenoid right here this solenoid gets its positive power from this red cable so to make it energize you need to ground which is this stud here the wire going to that stud comes off of this right here your start button so when you mash the start button the start button is grounded in this transmission case it gives a ground here which brings a ground when you mash your button to here you already have a positive in here that causes the contacts to close inside of the solenoid and when it closes it takes your 12 volt power from the battery cable over to this cable which runs to the starter so whenever you give it a ground it pulls these contacts together it takes 12 volt from here through this one and gives it voltage here that's all there is to the starting circuit is literally that simple all right now for what i would call the the toughy if you even want to call it a tough one okay so we have an ignition switch let me get the screen where I can see. there is our ignition switch right here the key side of it right there back here oh good you can see it without even getting it around. This is the back side of it. Two terminals, that's all there is. Let's see if we can track it. Two, two terminals. One, two. Okay. When you twist that key, you're taking power through that switch to the other wire. So you're bringing 12 volt positive to it and through it. And that red wire comes right on around through here we bring it right on down here and it comes over here all right so whenever you turn your key switch on you bring a 12 volts positive to this side the positive side of the coil the negative side of your coil is where your black wire from your electronic ignition is going to go right here and your red wire from the electronic ignition that's inside this distributor cap right here you guessed it 
it goes right there. And that's it. It's that simple. I forgot to mention when I was showing the ignition switch, yes, one side of that ignition switch needs to go to 12 volts positive. The other side, so basically this wire, let me get you guys right up here where you can see. Maybe you can see. Sorry about the shaky camera. This wire is going to be 12 volts positive all the time. This one is only 12 volt positive whenever you turn the key on. And then it sends voltage from here down to the coil. Right about here is where I will throw in a uh, wiring diagram, like something just hand drawn to kind of simplify that. But I wanted to actually show this on the tractor so you could see the different things that I'm I'm talking about whenever I draw the the schematic out. As far as the coil goes, there's probably going to be a ton of comments that tell you that I'm all wrong and all this kind of stuff. Here's my suggestion without even going into all that. If you really want an explanation of it, I'll give you one. But like I said, I suggest the electronic ignition. I really push them. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not even giving you a name on them. I will put a link down in the description because we are Amazon associates. We have, you know, affiliate links. No sponsorship, no nothing like that. It's just that I believe in them that much. They work that well. Um, when you order your electronic ignition, order the coil that's made for it because it'll be set at the right, the right on. Everything is going to work. And that will greatly, greatly simplify the entire process. It's really not that hard. And I know that maybe I oversimplified it, but uh, um, that's just, it's easy. It really is easy. It's, it can be confusing if you let it be confusing. Don't. Think of it in three different systems, three different circuits. You'll nail it. So, anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it helps you out. Um, let us know in the comments if it did. If you still have unanswered questions, please leave them in the comments and I will do what I can to, to make it work out for you. Um, anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure that you like the video. A little thumbs up. Um, if you enjoy what you're seeing, all the stuff, check out some more videos that we got. Um, go ahead and hit the old subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss all the other stuff. we got a bunch of big stuff coming out really soon. So anyway, thanks for watching. Catch up with you later.